Hi, everybody. Dan Klimke from NetAlly here. We're going to get started in just a moment. Uh, we'll let a few more folks have a chance to log into the webinar. Uh, in the meantime, I'll go over a couple of logistics. Uh, I will be monitoring the Q&A panel. If you have some questions along the way, feel free to send them over. Uh, if I can answer them along the way, I'll do so. If not, we'll certainly save those for covering at the end of the session. And who knows when the end of the session is going to be. When you get two guys like UC and James together, who who knows, we may be here for hours. Well, as long as it's entertaining, who cares? Uh, so feel free to use that uh, Q&A window along the way. Um, and I guess with that, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to our core presenters. I'll be acting a little bit as a moderator, uh, but not too much. I uh, don't wanna get in the way of the conversation between James and Yusi, and I'll let those guys go ahead and introduce themselves. Yusi, go ahead. Yes. Hello. Good. Uh, good morning. I, I guess I should say to most of the audience, and good evening uh, to those in Europe, and uh, I hope you're in bed to those in Australia, and and uh, Asia. Uh, thank you so much, Dan and James, for inviting me here. It's uh, you know finally, right? Uh, I, I just tweeted that you know five years ago, your guys' previous director of product, Dilip Advandi. Uh, five years ago, he gave me an I love air magnet shirt that he had custom made. Uh, and now only five years later, who says swag doesn't work, right? So so handing out swag, that's the thing. Uh, but thank you. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Jussi. Uh, I work for a company called Mist, which is a Wi-Fi infrastructure company. Uh, it's by far the fastest growing Wi-Fi infrastructure company. And uh, it's, it's the one that actually does AI elsewhere than in PowerPoints as well. Uh, well. We'll take a look at some some of that stuff today, but uh, we are here to talk about Wi-Fi tools. That's a, that's a big passion of mine, always has been. I uh, did those for something like 15 years, competed fiercely with, for example, you, both, of, both of you fine gentlemen. So it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Yeah, and I'm uh, James Kikoski. I'm the CTO at NetAlly. Uh, I've been in test and measurement since 1980. I had 15 years at, at HP. Uh, and then uh, in 1995, moved to a small networking test startup. Some of you may remember the original OneTouch from 1996, touchscreen, uh, 10100 Ethernet tester. Uh, that, was, that was kind of my first baby. And I guess I've got about 24 products under my belt over the last uh, 40 years. So uh, happy to be here. Well, guys, let's dig into it. Uh, thanks for the introduction about your backgrounds and whatnot. Uh, or firstly, we wanted to talk about why are we doing this webinar? You know, the title of the project or the, the webinar here is the Impossible Wi-Fi Tools Challenge, combining simple and comprehensive. Why did we Why did we choose that? What's What's the big challenge? Well, I, I can I can start maybe. So, so it's uh, like with any user interface, it's it's always finding a balance between uh, you, you know the amount of features you make uh, and the usability that you do. And um, a, a good common comparison might be like the the last Nokia phones that had no touch screen. Uh, they started to have so many menus and you know the buttons were small the screen was small but still you had to go through a lot of steps uh, to get through the menus and stuff like that uh, Nokia phones went from incredibly intuitive in the late 90s or mid late 90s into like fairly complicated to use uh, just because the user experience uh, you know didn't evolve too much and they kept adding more and more features without rethinking the whole thing, which is which is the hard thing, and kind of forgot the user uh, right there along the way. Whereas then Apple comes out with the exact opposite uh, touchscreen, one button in the phone, uh, you know, totally took over the market, and then Android, uh, you know, at pretty much at the same time as well. James, is that a fair yeah. assessment of the struggle we've had uh, as Wi-Fi tools vendors? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, in some ways, I think, uh, I think what actually defines us uh, in the industry sometimes is, is almost our failures, right? And 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 so one 
uh, project I was a part of uh, was uh, uh, an overly complicated, where, where we took a traditional use model in oscilloscopes and went to a single mono knob, and and uh, and and it just kind of fell on its face, right? And so. Uh, we actually started a campaign, uh, uh, no nerd boxes, right? And 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 that was, you know, that was 35 years ago, and and here it is still as as relevant as as ever. And I think, you know, one of the things we struggle with is, and the thing that's great about the Wi-Fi community is we have all these strong voices, and and you know, the social is unbelievable, uh, and you get those inputs. But I think there's also a silent majority there of the of the uh, uh, maybe even occasional tool user needs it more as a fire extinguisher, but the guy that that you know. It isn't his daily driver, and uh, needs to pick it up, run fast, and uh, and so we, it's, you know, I, I think whenever we approach any uh, feature, I try to kind of revert to a beginner's eyes, if you will, and uh, and really think about if I if I if I didn't know what was going on, uh, what would what you know uh, I, what what I need to see, and in fact, I think for me one of my better products was that original one touch in 96 and it was because I'd come over from 15 years in oscilloscopes and logic analyzers and really didn't know anything about networking and so as I did a lot of customer visits really I, I, w I was as nascent as as the average user and was really able to kind of design the UI to that so I, I think as you as you uh, build experience that you know keep it keeping those that that, that nascent beginner eyes mindset is is is, uh, is key so how do you do that uh any anyway like it's it's easy when you just jump into a new product but but let's say you said you've been in the industry since the 80s and you've done wireless tools also for good 20 years uh, how do you still today like how do you step sh switch your mindset and step into the shoes of the typical user uh, and and then a follow up question from my uh, point of view would be like how do you define your target user or the typical user yeah we know there's there's a there's 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 a spectrum right there there's there's these tensions pulling you towards the nerd box right and that's going to be your engineers right because oh boy they just figured out they can decode something and how do we get that into pixels and then and then and then like i said kind of the the community or or you know having the you know and and, and it's, it's great to have the access to you know high-end uh, uh, industry leaders in Wi-Fi, uh, but they're going to ask for things that just aren't going to scale to to the masses, and so kind of kind of just being aware of that for starters, and not just immediately responding to every request. I mean, if we did, we'd have these fire-breathing boxes with with 80 radios, so they could be on every channel at all times, gathering line rate traffic, and 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 completely, you know processing that but it's got to fit in your hand and it's got to be affordable and so uh, uh, so I, I think a lot of times just just getting out you know I tell you, you can get smacked down pretty quick on on uh, on just some uh, usability testing just finding a naive user and it can you know and a lot of times it can just be somebody in your office you know and, and hey what does the screen mean to you what is this telling you and and so uh, just just finding that balance uh, between the too, you know, it, it reminds me of the old was it Nokia, so so advanced it's simple, right? And and just trying to keep that presentation and simplicity in, in mind, uh, and 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 a lot of effort goes into tiering the user interfaces, right? Because you you do still recognize that you, you do have this information in the bowels of the unit, and you do want to let the person you know drill into that eventually, but it certainly shouldn't you know occupy the top tier uh, screens. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really really the challenge. And then again, uh, also the the Wi-Fi community. Not only is it a, like a priceless source of information and feedback, but it's also one of your marketing channels, right? Uh, and uh, so 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 in a sense, you have to cater to that audience quite a bit. Uh, and 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 looking at like even though it's just a fraction of of your user base, uh, you still have to cater. To that audience quite a bit and also uh whatever you make for that audience i think it translates to some extent to the to the wider user base not not all of it but probably much of much of it as well so do you um like in web applications you, um if, if we look at net ally uh like 
a frac uh, or like a decent chunk of your functionality is today on the web and there it's easier uh, but what about like uh, analyzing typical user behavior on your devices like, like uh, you know which you which features are the users actually using which ones are they not and things like that I wish I got a dollar every time I I uh, I was you know with the team implementing a feature that you know might yeah. not have uh, been been so widely used, uh, but then again, you also need the visibility to that. Uh, you can, of course, get feedback on trade shows and, and you know Twitter or wherever. But how does that how does that work for you guys? The whole like truly yeah. collecting data about what what gets used and what doesn't. Yeah. So you know, for me, a, a huge eye opener was in in. easier to do self-contained products right and, and sort of managing two two completely different technology code bases in the cloud and 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 the embedded side uh, and then how do they communicate and keeping them in sync right it, 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 it's 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 actually gotten harder uh, in my opinion but uh, but when we first did links burn I, I you know uh, you know, had access to the anonymized data, right? Not looking at anybody's specific test data, but to just understand. Uh, and now that we have, you know, five, six years of data to see the the rise of POE and the increase in POE classes, and but to understand uh, uh, what what uh, services people are accessing, what kind of response times they're seeing, how you know, uh, you know, how their DSCP is performing, uh, j just all that, and so. Uh, so being able to and, and and it's actually driven us in some of our decisions uh, in fact when we were doing the etherscope we were really struggling because we needed a phi a, a wireline phi that would cover you know not just one gig but 2.5 gig 5 gig the n base t and and 10 gig and and one of the vendors we had traditionally used had dropped 10 megabit right and and it'd be really easy to go up well, 10 megabit what who cares right we actually went into link live and figured out that 12 percent of our customers had 10 megabit link tests uh and so to be able to do that it just it just basically drove the decision okay i'm, I'm sorry we have to drop five vendor a and go to b because they do do 10 megabits and so uh so the, the cloud's actually been been great you know and having this anonymized uh data i mean we've got I, I haven't looked in quite a while, but you know we just have millions and millions of test results, and 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 it just gives us an incredible insight on a whole to to what the industry is doing, what technologies are rising, uh, how many people are using VLANs, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and 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 so uh, uh, and you know it's kind of an interesting time. It used to be. You know, you think back, the only way you got information was to get in your car, go visit a customer, you know, and now between, you know, webinars and social and, and, and anonymized cloud data, it's actually, it's actually overwhelming the, 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 the data. And I think the harder part now is almost sifting through it and, and, uh, and making rational decisions. Exactly. It's it's uh, analyzing the data and finding the needles from the haystack and, uh, and, there's there's two so and for example uh we at miss do do the same kind of things like you know so social and all of that and we have a, a forum maybe you guys use a system called user voice as well so we have a place called ideas.mist.com where everything is out in the open when it comes to customer requests you can submit your request you can see everybody else's uh requests uh you know, you know you can see you can vote for different requests so so you know you don't need to write a duplicate you can just you know and then we implement every quarter we implement a handful of features from that list and it's pretty easy because it's it's prioritized and all of that so so that's where kind of the incremental uh innovation or incremental improvements happens but that's that uh, sometimes you just have to combine the the bits and pieces of user feedback and then internal like true internal innovation from your research department uh to come out with something completely novel and something completely new uh, how does that work for yeah. for you guys in in mist's case I'll, I'll just uh lay the groundwork here uh just not to just not ask you questions but for mist for example like product management obviously is very close to the customers but we also try to get our data even our data scientists who sit next to the product managers very close to the customers through the product managers and even directly because uh, um, 
for example, data scientists today are the kings in a sense that they understand what's possible with ML and AI today and three years from now. Yeah, you know, and all that's great. You know, as you know, sometimes you just have to have take a leap, a leap of intuition. You know, and and I I can think back. Yeah, original One Touch when we proposed the touch screen. Uh, you know, we were still at Fluke. It, it was. It's not going to be rugged enough. It's going to get scratched, you know, and it's just like, no, no, we, we need this, you know, and, and now you think about touchscreens being pervasive, it, it, but uh, in fact, they, they just, in fact, have a, I have a patent for touchscreen on a network tester, right, in, in 95. And so uh, for us, a more recent uh, uh, leap like that was in Android, right? D you know, we just realized that we need to focus on our core competency of network test and, and it's only getting harder, right? You know, it used to be 10, 100, now there's six link speeds used to be one poe class now there's eight used to be one yeah, wi-fi standard now there's you know six and seven and, and the problem is just like my 10 megabit example we can't just shoot things off the back right these things have a long uh, a long half-life and so uh so it's only gets 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 more complicated over time and sometimes though like in the case of android you know we we can't we can't have an engineer spending time working on on a on an on a on our own version of a browser, our own file manager, our own uh, uh, you know all the all these all these core things. And I tell you, when we jumped over to Android, uh, just the, the 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 things that came out of the system, the you know just the, the the camera, the video, the 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 microphone, that you know you, you can run a you can run a you can run a WebEx or I could run a you know any video yeah. conferencing off of it. You know those are things that you would never even imagine being able to do on your tester. And, 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 you know, and, and not that, you know, we don't have our challenges with Android, but, uh, you know, the customization of the desktop alone, right? In fact, you can see a big change for us was to go from the monolithic app uh, where you had to drill in to try to find things to amplification, because that was how we felt people used products, right? You want a pizza, you do this, you want a, an Uber, you do that, right? But, it, it, but that app granularity, at the same time, we needed a the traditional workflows to go from find a device in discovery to doing a port scan on it. And so being able to, uh, being able to uh, use the intent system in Android uh, uh, to, to, to intercommunicate between the apps uh, is, uh, is key, right? You see, it's nice, clean, crisp material design. And, and I'll say one other thing about about uh, uh, Android. We we got on board with a, a UI standard called a Material Design, not a standard kind of guidelines out, out of uh, out of Google. Uh, and and uh, because one as as we put part of the functionality in the cloud, right? The stuff that belonged there, the analytics, the big screen, uh, and and things like that. We uh, we had to. Uh, uh, we we can't expect the users to have a different user experience. You know, the, I, the, oh, when I go from the handheld to the cloud, I can't be just like like this gut wrenching change of a UI. And so, having a almost identical UIs uh, between the two and the harmonization, uh, uh, it, colors, icons, workflows, uh, uh, metaphors like filter chips. Uh, you know, th those things are, were really important uh, as we got into the, into the cloud. So. Uh, so yeah, it's absolutely. Been, uh, yeah. And and you can you can even see like uh in terms of not just uh does Android have the bits and pieces, but it's the smoothness. It's the it's kind of like Android provides the level of of smoothness in and responsiveness in everything you do, right? Because because you can yes. like some of these custom made uh, like custom built OSs. Like you only have so yeah. much time to build a core OS, right? But yeah, for Google, right. Android has been in the development for hundreds of man years, and it really shows. It's it's so smooth in everything. The transitions, like the things that uh, you don't really pay attention yeah. to unless they're lagging, and then you only think of them as you, you know a bit off yeah. or something like that. Yeah, you you, you are so, spot on. You know, when I uh, with the example that comes to my mind there is, is scrolling through a list of things, right? When we were had proprietary OSs and UIs, scrolling without having a tear, uh, it, you know, and 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 being smooth and kinetic, right? Where it, it has it takes the velocity of your finger uh, into account, right? That's stuff you could never do as a test and measurement uh, company. You know, and you have a list of a thousand devices you discovered, you know, being able to get through that quickly uh, uh, matters. And, and so, uh, 
you know, well, they have to, you not only get all this kinetic scrolling and, you know, the, the reality is they probably had a PhD working on smooth scrolling, you know, for, for a year. And, and, and when you get to the bottom of the screen, you know, you get this nice little bubble that comes up as a, as a, as just this feedback and that though, you're right, th those little, there's two parts of this. One, one is just those beautiful, smooth interactions with all the right feedback. And then, and then for us, uh, that our testers look like where you're spending the same thing that you're spending three, four, five, six hours a day in your mobile devices anyway, right? And so leveraging those uh, those, those idiot, you know, sharing is a good example, right? You know, you take a picture, you share it to uh, some social site, you know, same thing for us. You take a screenshot of a test result, you share it to Link Live, you know, taking advantage of those uh, idioms that, that people, it's just it's just ingrained in us now, you know, it's, has been a, a really nice uh, outcome of, of of the move to Android, but it, but it wasn't without, you know, back to the original thing, it, it, it was it was a leap of intuition uh, that we would do this and and that it would be accepted and adopted. And, I mean, heck, we, we had so many concerns, just even will it be stable, will it, you know, because at the same time you're getting all this wondrous stuff, uh, you're also getting, you know, uh, uh, millions of lines of source code that you have no idea, you know, and so... Uh, uh, That's true, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, and the platform is. needs to be mature enough. You don't, you don't want to jump on Android, uh, you know, start doing custom Android uh, development in 2009. Uh, it needs to be a bit later. So, so what was the... For, uh, I think my first like Android project started in like I don't know 2011 something like that uh, 10 10 or actually nine or ten but but for you guys like because this was a totally customized uh, hardware so thus a much 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 greater undertaking what was the can you describe the defining moment and and the thinking like like when you guys were like heck let's let's go to android because that's like you said it must have been an interesting discussion and a lot of people involved it's a huge like it's a million dollar multi-million dollar decision for you guys it, it is it is you know and, and i think as we looked at our at our r d investment and trying to chase all these technologies on the wireline and and, and wi-fi side uh you know, and, and if we look back at our past products, our, our first jumping off point was 2015. That was around Android 5. Uh, and, uh, and you know, we just real. I mean, a browser is a classic example, right? Who, who doesn't want a browser on their tester, right? You can use it to provision, you know, web portal uh, things. I could use it to get, I could, like on my Etherscope right now, I could go to the Mist uh, I can go to the the uh, Mist Cloud, uh, uh, you know, using using Chrome. Well, we had a we had a you know we've done a browser in the past. We tried to we tried to get some open source browser, kind of put our own face on it. Uh, you know, internally we dubbed it uh, WCB, world's crappiest browser, right? And you know, and it didn't have bookmarks and all, all just all the things you would expect, right? And so now now being able to to, to lash into Chrome uh, and uh, and use that, but that was a classic example of what would be a and something that would be a distraction for us in terms of R and D investment. That it wasn't in our core competencies, yet it was kind of an expectation in our testers. And so uh, it, we just kind of hit this tipping point where you know, especially as we got into adding a camera and audio systems and 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 things like that. You ju you just can't. I mean, just look at the picture viewer alone in in, in Android and and its ability to to go through and annotate shots and and uh and things like that so we, we you know at some point it just became apparent to us we needed to to flip over to android oh look my i haven't moved my room light just went out uh hey, but, so james uh, and you yeah. see what yeah it's clear we face some internal challenges to try to embed the technology to enable the capability of the tester to give the customers visibility of what they need maybe let's turn the conversation to specifically with respect to uh wi-fi analysis and troubleshooting what what is the data what what are the data sets that are necessary and how how do we manage the fact that there's a view of that data that a frontline technician can consume and make use of and that there's deeper diagnostics that an expert wants access to i, I think you're explaining that our technology gives us the ability to to deliver that but but let's talk about you know, specifically with respect to roaming, interference, uh, you know, coverage versus yeah, performance yeah. and gathering evidence. Let's turn this now to the actual view of Wi-Fi. Uh, what does it all mean to those users who have those varying needs? That's that's a great question. And and if we start from uh, you, you know, 
the phone call that comes in let's say you, you know something is go you, you know something might be odd but you don't really know a user calls and says uh, i can't connect or what there's really two problems in wi-fi i can't connect and wi-fi is slow uh and slow is a nice way to put it uh you, you know replace that with another s uh you know we're starting with s like suspectable uh but let's how about this Dan, I have sent you an email. So, so we will. You, you have you ever used uh, the Miss dashboard? I confess, I have not. Okay, so I have <laughs> sent you an email. Uh, if you open that email, and we'll get you in the Miss dashboard, and I will guide you through. Uh, you know, we will make you a uh, level one Wi-Fi technician, and we will analyze some of the uh, challenges on the client devices. And then we will move to deeper layers with James. Okay, so if you have internet connectivity, you should be able to access Nakatomi Corporation. Okay. Uh, I would Perfect. bet that I am a level half technician, but we'll see what we can get. Log in to accept, or do I have to, I have to register? Yes. Uh, I think you need to register if you don't have a missed account, which I guess you don't. I uh, probably so do not. Your details and, um, and we will go from there. So what's happening here is uh, uh, Dan, Never used MIST, but we'll look at some some uh, basic issues uh, with, with the site if there is any. Uh, we have a phone call come in, and and we should uh, figure out whether whether there is something going on or not. So so yeah, just uh, create the MIST account, and I have added you administrative. This may be a big mistake. Uh, I have added you administrative privileges to. Uh, oh, you're to getting this is trouble. <laughs> But then again, the site is suspectable. It's called Nakatomi Plaza, so it might be exploding, you know, any any. When, any when all the SSIDs guess. change to Dan Rocks, you'll know it was a mistake. Exactly. <laughs> okay, my first challenge is, is I'm not getting past the... Uh, uh, do I have to go to my email and uh, do I some sort of I think you may need to go to your email and... Okay, uh, hang on. Do a confirmation uh, there, of course. Yeah. Um, we, have that, a, we have an unknown... K who has been spamming our server, so we had to implement this, uh, you know, two-step verification system. Uh, All so, right, okay. there we go. Here we are. Here we are. Perfect. So, so go to. Um, let's first look at like uh, how's the health of the site in general terms, and let's say you want to understand what's been going on the last week. Uh, next to monitor, there's wireless networks. Okay. All right. And instead of uh, the airport, take the site Nakatomi Plaza. And instead of today, let's say we want to look at the you know seven last seven days. Perfect. And here we can see. Uh, so, so the way you, you asked, like, how do we analyze these basic basic things? Actually, you can if you want to pin zoom in a little bit on the graphs uh, on those graphs, so that the. Uh, yeah, there you go. Perfect. Scroll down a little bit. Uh, start, so we start from time to connect. So at least we kind of divide uh, Wi-Fi help into, into just a few uh, different criteria. First one, um, maybe we could look at the second one from the top is successful connects. How, what's the percent of time? This is all the users, all the access points. How often are the users able to connect to the network? So 91% of the time, the users are successful at connecting, right? And we, on the right, we can see when they weren't successful, 100% of the time, the problem was authorization. Uh, coverage, 77% of the time. And then out of all the users, there's problems with, uh, you know, the poor client talking back to the AP or just plain old weak signal. So we divide this into like six or seven different criteria. And we, whereas, uh, you know, uh, with, for example, this guy here, I drill down to the exact specifics right there, right then. Of course, uh, Mist is looking at it from the from the ceiling, from the access point perspective, just focusing on the client experience. Which, oh, what kind of a day are these clients having? And then we can start drilling out down from there. So, so there we can see kind of the 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 basic overview and then start drilling down to different criteria. The second thing I wanted to show you is is Marvis. So on the left hand side you will see Marvis, which you you don't have access to. I, I think you might be uh, missing a license. So um, 
you know, that's my bad. I may not be, <laughs> you know, powerful enough to create you a license on the fly. So can I take controls of the screen and show you a couple of things we could do? With of course. Marcus? Are Let you okay with that? Flip that Can over you to me. The ball? There you go. It's all yours. Thank you, sir. So, so let's say the level one technician. Uh, let's say you uh, you get a client called or a customer that we call SJP, and uh, you want to find out like what's going on there. I hope you can see my screen, by the way. I just punch yes. in how is SJP. On, on Marvis, it's kind of like think of it like Google. Uh, think of it as as Google uh, for Wi-Fi networks. So, so it, it translates this. I think you meant troubleshoot SJP during today, and then it shows you. And this isn't this what a wireless engineer would answer if you asked like how is this client doing? The client encountered poor wireless coverage 68% of the time, primarily due to weak signal strength. The problem, luckily, is client specific with most client failures occurring on the five gigahertz band and on this SSID. It also had some challenges with roaming due to just slow standard roams. This problem, however, is widespread along the entire site on the five gigahertz band. And it also has some problems connecting to the network. So, so it looks at, let's say, the entire day, entire week, whatever, uh, for that client or many clients and tries to tell you like what's going on. That's kind of the, the thinking here. And you know, the typical question could be also like unhappy users. Just show me the unhappiest users, those people with the worst day. And then, ah. Oh, yeah, these guys seem to have a pretty bad day. It's a long red arrow, so pretty bad day. And then we could start looking at, hmm, let's look at the insights of that guy. And what's the what's the thing uh, you typically do? Uh, you, first, you look at, huh, it's actually the system says a pre-processed answer. It's a four-way, uh, you, you know, it's a PSK problem. But then if it's a tougher problem, what do you do? You go there with your ether scope, take a packet capture. Or in case of MIST, uh, you, you download the packet capture from the cloud, which, whichever works. This is from the AP perspective, and then uh, ether scope gets it from the client's per client perspective. Gotcha. But that's kind of the thought process of like, uh, how are all the clients doing? Start drilling down or ask questions about the network. Cool, very cool. And Even I could do that. Yeah, and, and it, it's pretty good at understanding like clients with most roaming problems at Nakatomi Plaza. Yeah, so now now instead of showing all the problems, it shows that this guy has had the most roaming problems followed by these guys. And you know, that's that's the thought process here. So that's the level one technician uh, who, who just, you know, sits at the desk and, and looks at the system. But then, uh, James, what happens when the desk, uh, you know, the user leaves the desk and, and uh, actually goes on the shop floor to take a look at the network from the client perspective, from the shop floor? Yeah, let me uh, share in. You've got the ball. And uh, let's see here. So uh, here is the, how's that look? Can you see that? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, so uh, so this is actually uh, the, uh, so here I am. Let me back out one step. So here I am on the uh, on the unit. You, here's the amplification I spoke of early of the functionality. Uh, and and so for starters, you can just dive in anywhere. If you want to do a capture, that's fine. If you if you want to understand all the devices that are on your network, that's fine. If you want to dig right into the RF side, that's great. Performance testing, survey, our Air Mapper, our latest edition. But uh, you know the most basic thing we have is is auto test, and so. Uh, so I'll go there, and and it's sort of our layer one through seven test uh, of of the entire network, and it kind of takes everything an expert would know and do, and tries to convert it to basically red, yellow, and and green. Uh, and so we have these profiles, and and uh, and in fact, uh, uh, you know, this isn't necessarily the wireline side crowd, but but it all starts with with test targets, right? And and so down here you can see that for uh, something, so, you know, one one 
step for us also was moving to more of a tap to glass uh, end testing, right? That that just doing a SYNAC or TCP port connect uh, wasn't good enough that, you, you know, because you could be connecting to something, but there could be some intermediate firewall or proxy or, or uh, captive portal that was getting in the way and you wouldn't even know it was SYNAC because you just knew you got a response to your SYNAC. And so here we're actually pulling like the whole Google web page and, and we give you these nice graphic breakdowns. And, and if I wanted to run that test again, I could. Uh, uh, quickly and uh, and then and then a set of actions off of that. But that that's that's what a test target looks like, and that's kind of what we're looking at here. And I can I can do I want to FTP down a file, up a file, whatever. And that but you can see we kind of and this is again on the wireline side, but we have the full treatment, right? It starts with PoE. Uh, we have something called True Power. We make sure we can pull all the wattage up to 90 watts you want, link speed and duplex, monitoring for VLANs, because a lot of times you might be using uh, trunk ports uh, uh, on for things, uh, what switch you're connected to, and and under every one of these is is is, is great detail. It's not the most interesting port, but you can see that uh, you know we're we're you know we have we have lots of stats in here. Uh, and uh, in fact, for switches, we show you all the advertisements we're seeing. We know this guy from CDP and LLDP and even and even SNMP. Uh, and so uh, 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 anyway, on and on. Bottom line, you know, DHCP is another another great example. And and you know, we, as 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 you know, I sort of think of MIST as, as the overall survey camera surveillance system. We're more like the, the the camera on top of your helmet, right? Kind of the the, the user perspective, mobile now. and and running around. Yeah, I was trying. I had a slide for that from five years ago, and I couldn't couldn't find it. But uh, uh, but uh, here, you know, DHCP is a great example. You know, the Wi-Fi is not working. Well, it's really the DHCP server is running slow. And so for us to show you how that time was spent, and we have a, there's a lot of stuff under the hood here. Like we detect a second DHCP offer because a very common problem is somebody brought a, brought a little home resi thing in and plugged it into the network and didn't know. And all of a sudden, you know, on your corporate 172, uh, uh, you know, place you're getting these 192.168, you know, uh, uh, DHCP offers. And that little local guy will probably beat your, 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 uh, your DHCP server every time, and so, uh, but, but, so that, that's a sort of a layer one through seven test on, on uh, wired and then and then here you can also see we have we have wi-fi and so wi-fi is kind of the kind of the same way you know layers one and two how you linked how you you know the channel you're on the ap you're connected to uh, but then above that dhcp dns is all the same and i've even reused these test targets here so this these are called profiles and then you can even build them into a group so here's a Here's a group where I want to say, hey, you know what? I want anybody to be able to press a single button and and basically uh, test the wired and and the production network Wi-Fi SSID on both 2.4 and 5. And I could just hit that and it would it would take off and run. And in fact, if I drilled in on one of these, uh, you can uh, kind of watch it, it build along here, uh, eventually get my PoE here, uh, and 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 so it goes, right? And then and then it goes on. It'll go on to doing uh, uh, the Wi-Fi. You can see in less than a minute, I can completely verify layer one, whether it's PoE or v and VLANs or link speeds or or Wi-Fi connectivity uh, in different bands, different SSIDs. You can drive this to different BSSIDs if you want to do a specific thing, and then all of this is savable as a as as a profile. And then since we all know, I'll add, I'll add a, a, a third one to, to use these lists is intermittent stuff, right? It just drives you crazy when there's intermittent stuff. And so a recent addition for us was not only can you take this profile and run it uh, and run it uh, uh, as, a, as a single event, but I could come in here and enable this thing called periodic auto test where I say, hey, let, I want to run that every minute for 60 minutes or 24 hours, uh, and and we call it kind of like a rinse and repeat. And so uh, and so now, if I was to run that that, it would sit here, and you'll see there's even a new panel that shows up at the bottom. And this thing will sit there and just purr for for 24 hours, validating all this, pushing all the data to Link Live, where you can immediately filter out failures. So that that's kind of an example of of just how we've tried to take 
you know, this expert, uh, here's all the things I want you to test from layer one through seven, uh, and, and basically pack it into a predefined auto test. Uh, and uh, I, and in fact, if if I were to, I'll, I'll just drill one. There's 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 depth under all these cars. I talked earlier about tiering, right? If I was to drill in on this, you could see that here we're actually trending our our uh, our utilization, our retries. Of course, nobody's in the office; it's kind of boring. Uh, but uh, uh, but but just having all these trended, and and to go one step further, uh, I together I can't show you roaming right uh, uh, directly but uh, but here's a uh, uh, I, I did a roam at home using my missed APs uh, and uh, uh, and so uh, here I was connected I drilled in on the link and and then uh, and then let me go ahead and and then and then uh, and and I was I was happy right that I was I was just locked in on this AP channel 132 uh, no no roam scans right that's when the that's when the uh, Wi-Fi client gets a little twitchy hey I need to look for a better option and at the same time we're trending this utilization retries phi TX rate I start to move a little bit you see the signal drop oh all of a sudden I get one roam scan I move a little further away my, I'm getting a little twitchy another roam scan. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, you know, my client picks up and says, "Hey, you know what? There, there's a better. Yeah, my, my, I got a better. I got a better AP on that SSID." And so uh, it switched. Took five scans. Went from from AP one to AP two. There's the BSSIDs, and you can see these are all drillable links. So I can just go in then at, at nauseum and and look at those. And and at the same time, you see those those changes all these all these other graphs are time correlated so you can see when i roamed my my tx rate popped back up right and so uh, and then if you really want the gory details under the hood we've got this connection log that that has all that so so th that's that's kind of an example of how we tried to take this this uh, uh this 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 very complicated uh, uh, thing of roaming and, and just try to simplify it so that you can understand, hey, what, what was driving the roam at this point? Was it a, was it a over utilization on my current AP? Was it, was it a low, a bad SNR? Uh, was it the retries were getting high? It wasn't healthy. Was it that the TX rate was getting too low? And kind of understand the relationship of the four of those. What what drove the roam, and so you can see how with 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 mist, you can come in from the top and sort of sort of get this this bird's eye uh, macro view of of the roaming events. Uh, and and in our case, you can actually walk around with a thing with the, with the handheld uh, tester and 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 experience the roam and understand it from the from the client perspective with 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 the kind of detail we can only get out of our client driver. So. Uh, so exactly, it's it's like uh, it's two complementary ways that overlap a bit somewhere in the middle, uh, and and then uh, you, you know users typically I I would think use both. I don't know any Wi-Fi administrator who would not have uh, have used both the you know vendor dashboards and some you know handheld on-site tools as well. I was just like testing, uh, you know. Either scope and uh, and uh, this my favorite favorite little guy Link Sprinter the other day and I was just blown away first of all like the variety of tools that uh, that can you know uh, fr from like single button experience to this very comprehensive yet still kind of Android Android thing and just the amount of stuff that's crammed into this Android thing. I don't know how quickly, like I was blown away by how quickly after adopting the Android platform, you were able to put most of the NetAlly stuff in here. I don't know, yeah. how did you do that? And even, you know, uh, I was so happy to see this, all of this Mist stuff. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, the, the Mist AI app and, and you know, all of these, these are like, it runs third party apps nicely. But it runs like there's so many things that you have put in here: wireless testing, wired testing, like like passive, active. Uh, what about map? Yeah, map yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, 
you know, for us, it was sort of, it was, it was it was a melding of technology, keeping it handheld. You know, the, the predecessor to this was this this massive OptiView XG, right? And so, but we wanted a handheld. Uh, you know, and and there's just you know battery life and 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 screen. You know, finding the right match on the screen size versus handheld. Who doesn't want a bigger screen? But who, you know, you may not want to. You know, you want something you can throw in your laptop bag too. And so, uh, you know, for us, I think it, it was it was the merging of Android, uh, and then and then we had kind of two intellectual property gems. One was uh, Airwise, which came from the Air Magnet side of the house, uh, and which kind of just manages the whole SSID AP channel. Uh, uh, client maze, if you will, and and then we had this discovery library, which was this 20-year investment uh, th for, through Fluke Network and and Netscout's history, and 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 we had, we had to you know we brushed some of that up, right? We added uh, uh, Apple has MDNS as a naming scheme, uh, uh, multicast DNS, and so you know it, it isn't that we just had that we didn't have to we could just drop those in. We had to, we had to kind of refresh them, but uh, uh, but those are kind of the three core pieces. Then coupled with with uh, uh, with a uh, with a UI wrapped all around that, and and then just a lot of a lot of uh, hardware. You know, how do you do PoE loading? How do you how do you how do you solicit any PoE class, but have the equivalent of a 90 watt light bulb? And how long can you pull that power? You know, without overheating? And just so just a, just a lot of electromechanical uh, software stuff that 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 came together uh, on the product. But it, it's you know it's a massive it's a massive development effort uh, and. Uh, you know, Netherscope is our is our is our Queen Mary. It's the the tip of the spear, and what and what you're going to start to see is, is that technology is then going to trickle down, right? Because you know we realize not everybody you know needs both wired and Wi-Fi. There's people that are just wired, and 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 and, and there's people that are just Wi-Fi, and 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 you can't you know the expense of, of dragging around the other domain is is you know you don't need that. And so, uh, but you're going to see this this technology uh, uh, windfall that's going to come out of the etherscope. That's going to start to work its way into lower end products, and then uh, uh, and then and then coupled with that is, is Link Live. Uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll maybe I'll, I'll segue into the survey stuff a little bit if that makes sense you know because certainly another sort of clienty thing that you need to do is uh is uh is survey and so you know as we got to survey we realized yeah there, there's the high end you know si installing 100 aps you know or a thousand aps you know and 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 you know and and there were competitors that that you know, really doing an excellent job on that, right? But, but what we what we found was kind of the silent majority of people that just needed survey to visualize RF and do troubleshooting, right? And and it wasn't that they needed to generate this massive report to prove that they had the complete coverage of the installation, you know, throughout the hospital. It was that they needed to, they, you know, we, we have, you think of a managed service provider in a town who's who's serving off, you know, retail and doctor's offices. Think of, uh, uh, we, have, we have people that are installing major pieces of equipment uh, uh, that need to do a survey before just to get a sense of the RF environment. Uh, and, and, but mostly we have private network owners Owners, that the that the system was installed by by an SI right that happened at a time but but they're on day two and on and they just need to do survey and so we created this 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 concept called air mapper drop dead simple Lo load the floor plan hit start uh, let me I think I left my auto periodic auto test running here so let me go back and stop that uh, and all right so drop dead simple uh, and uh, and so you just hit start, uh, come in here. Uh, of course, you know, uh, having all the zoom and 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 pan capabilities. Uh, drop a couple data points. When you're done, hit stop. Send it to the cloud. Uh, and and uh, uh, in fact, I got my previous job comment. Uh, but I'll go ahead and, and shoot that up. Uh, and then and then on the link live side. Uh, I just come in here and uh, and here's basically this is a, a, a more complete survey, right? Obviously, two points won't be interesting, but but uh, here is let me see if I can bring this to the forefront. And you kept the classic air magnet color scheme as well. Yeah, yeah. In fact, well, if you yeah, exactly. Uh, the uh, uh, and and one thing you'll Notice here is just look at the harmonization. The, the, the hamburger stack is where navigation happens, right? That's where navigation happens oh, on, yeah, yeah, on, yeah. on this side too, right? That when I talked about that, we can't expect our users to learn a new uh, 
you know, a, a new UI paradigm when they, as we split functionality from being purely embedded handheld into embedded in cloud, we, we have to, we have to basically uh, uh, honor their learnings and then, and then tapping those learnings into the, into the, this, uh, you know, sort of, sort of the things, I mean, you know, you see hamburger stack used everywhere, but nevertheless, I'm in a survey, here's coverage, Oh, I want to filter, and I'm at work, right? So it's a Wi-Fi cesspool. But I want to come in, and let me just pick my my uh, production network, uh, LRC, uh, and and apply that. Now I'm looking at the coverage on uh, on LRC, uh, and and I. And I could sit here and say, okay, well, what's my coverage? You know, do, am I am I good at, at uh, minus 56? Uh, and and sort of move this scale here up and down. These filters are, are super powerful because they're 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 uh, progressive. So as I chose this SSID, it dropped the number of choices of of other things. But I could say, oh, you know what? Let me let me just let me take five gig out, you know, and uh, and let's go into the two point five gig. You can see we're building these filter chips, and I can just then peel them peel them back out. And so so that's thing one. Uh, different types of heat maps that you might want to do here. Uh, you know, here here's a here's a good one. Overlapping APs on SSID. Uh, so on two point four, uh, how many APs on on this SSID, and you can see I got good coverage, right? I got I got five APs. Uh, but let me drop my threshold down. Okay, where do I have? How many APs do I have with with uh, minus 45 dB? Let's say coverage. Hopefully, this makes a pretty picture. Yeah, not bad. Uh, and you can see only here do I have five. But if I were to say, hey, I want to make sure I have three APs uh, in every place these are the only places at minus 45 where i have that cover so you can just see this really simple workflow uh anything you see on the screen you can come over here and and uh get that out of the way and and add to our add to a report uh and then generate a pdf report uh and so uh so yeah, just as just as anybody can use it, and 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 kind of the interesting thing is is the collaboration, right? The the this could be done on a unit at a site you're not even at, and so you know the cloud really uh, has a set of advantages. There's certainly advantages, and and it's a single uh, 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 you know laptop, and that's the collector, uh, and 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 things like that. But but you know cloud from sort of a collaboration interactive, uh, and in fact uh, it, it can go even further than that. I can. I can remote into my etherscope through the cloud. So I could actually be sitting here at my desk guiding somebody like on their cell phone to uh to and and say, oh, walk over here and then and then literally clicking so, wow. the data point. I didn't know that. Uh you can actually remote in to an etherscope. Yeah, in, fact, in fact, the one that's on my that's desk right here, I can come in and and let me get that out of the way. Uh, and just remote in. Yeah, I haven't and, done my homework. I haven't. And uh, you know, the, I, I, the, you know, the problem with etherscope is there's, wow. there's, okay. there's no end of the homework. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, I, I mean, we're just touching the tip of the iceberg here. But but here I here I can basically sit here and 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 it's and it's nice because it's kind of. Oh, let me go ahead and resume. Let me go ahead and resume. This is kind of cool, right? I pushed it to the cloud. What if I looked at it in the cloud and I said I didn't have enough data? Well, you can actually come back and then resume, grab a couple more data points uh you stop push to the cloud again uh and uh in fact i could even push to the cloud come back back out a couple of data points uh and, I, I really like that uh yeah. that like there's so many times when you just have to send someone out on site or there's someone on site with very limited experience on this particular tool or that particular tool and with this you can have an expert uh, on call and and you know uh, just assist to get this person moving and and any insecurities will be wiped out with the remote access it's it's quite quite uh, nice and i think like if we since the topic was like uh combining the the simple with feature rich or something like that i think one of the things i've always admired uh about this is exactly what it is it's a single device uh right so so there's uh there's no multiple components there's just something uh there's something about that one button touch that wakes it up uh, and it's ready to go uh you know it boots up in like 10 seconds or something and and then 
it's just there everything is there ready to go yeah it, and it takes off running right if there's a cable plugged in we're going to auto test on that we start scanning all the wi-fi channels you know we're looking for problems before you even think about what you're what you're doing and in fact in fact one one problem we uh uh we have a, you know we we do uh and this and this ties into mist right you have you have uh uh you know with the ai comes uh uh and and sort of the self-healing uh, uh, aspect of things, you know, APs can change channels, right? The the the, uh, the radio resource management side of things, right? We're sitting there watching the BSS IDs, tracking what channels they're on. You set a threshold. Hey, if I see more than more than uh, uh, if I see any channel change on a BSS ID, I want to identify that and 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 bubble that to the top. And so. Uh, so you know it, it, it's great having that working behind the scenes and, and that automation. But when you come into a site, if there's something you know that that's kind of driving the APs to 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 to, to change channels, uh, knowing that just gives you a sense that hey, there's some instability here, right? So, something is yeah. coming and going and and making and making our Wi-Fi because every time a BSS ID changes channels, it's going to have to drag all the clients with it, right? And so uh, so yeah, I, I think there's just this beautiful complement between between the things Miss is doing and 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 we're doing, uh, and you know, and now that we're you know, now that we've sort of started this this webinar and collaboration, I, th I think that you know the best is yet to come. Absolutely, hundred uh, percent. And yeah, we like you said, we just scratched the surface of both systems, and I'll definitely be doing uh, a lot more uh, on the on the OptiView. I always say OptiView, don't I? I've, I've butchered the name uh, since day one because I've had relationship with Fluke uh, since since like uh, 2000 or something. But but yeah, the the Etherscope like it has so much stuff to it. Uh, is there like a training course or what's the best way to get trained uh, on these? Like let's say the G2 and and especially the Etherscope. If I really want to yeah, become so yeah, yeah, yeah. So of course we have a ton of stuff in in YouTube. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, let me go ahead and maximize this. If I can find it, there it is. Uh, and and uh, uh, but but so speaking to things that we normally couldn't do. Wow, we actually have you know a, a, a PDF viewer you know on the screen, and of course we have the world's best PDF viewer, right? Uh, and so nice. here's here's the full uh, user manual. Uh, and uh, uh, I think what am I on page 600, right? And then of course all this is searchable. Uh, you know, it just goes on and on, right? Uh, and so, uh, so there's that. And then, uh, and then, and then uh, again, since we're Android best based, you can go right to our right to our our videos here, and uh, and go right to our YouTube channel. And if you're interested in a particular subject, you might be able to just watch a couple of minute. Uh, uh, video right right on the go nice. and nice. Uh, and and think about that's just all from the handheld you don't have to drag along your laptop you don't have to you know and and when we spoke nice. about the apps nice. before that that's the beautiful thing right i can run the mist app i can run the uh i can run my trouble ticketing system uh uh i can run the the telecommunications the the, the you know the, the the conferencing system of choice for my company uh on on the product and add that to the to the to the client experience or the set of tools that we have because the reality is we can do a lot from the outside but but when Viz, mist delivers us an app there's things that they can only do within their domain so a good here's a cool thing on the mist app uh you can you can uh you, you can see all of your aps and you can make there's kind of a locate ap right which which will blink the led on on the on the bottom right so you might be uh you think you know yeah you can walk around and, and by signal strength find your way to an ap but there's also times that it might just be simple for somebody to to say hey make, make that thing blink so i can figure out which of these 10 things on the ceiling it is uh and so uh so yeah just this just this beautiful harmony of of of, uh, of pulling in vendor apps like mist and the things that they add to your workflow on top of the on top of the things that we do uh, uh that that are that are really our value add Absolutely, and and uh, if you if you don't mind uh, actually talking about the whole synergy thing, I have a pretty decent example of such uh, on my screen now. If you don't mind, I'll steal Please. the ball from you. Uh, okay, uh, I hope you can see my screen. So this, uh, what what you don't see 
is what I was trying to show. Here we go. So this screen is uh, another part of Marvis. You, Marvis was the AI agent uh, engine that you know responds to your questions, human questions, human answers, as you just saw. Like how how is James, and then it will give you your Wi-Fi experience for the week or something like that. So so this is the other side, Marvis actions. And what does this guy show? Uh, it it doesn't show any problems in any part of your network. This is like the task task list you look at as an administrator every day when you come to work how is my marvis actions only one thing there's one bad cable here so so switch related problem and it's a bad cable on nakatomi plaza this switch on this port and what does it recommend test and replace cable hmm i wish there was a system i could use to uh, to test that cable yeah, you, you know, great, great example because uh, it's cable. You know, your 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 visibility is, is great, uh, but if you think about the cabling, there's switch patch panel or, or uh, patch cable to patch panel, horizontal cabling, typically wall jack, another patch cable. Which is it? You know, and 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 which end of the cable is on? Do I want to just replace? You know, do I just want to replace the RJ? Do I need to do a new punch down? So you get into our cable test, and I and I didn't know where we we're going here, but but uh, but basically, uh, uh, and I'm connected to a, a switch currently. But you know, we have a full TDR wire mapping. We have office locators. We do pin by pin wire mapping. So then you could you would have this. You would tell the the technician on site, hey, go out and take a look at this drop off of uh, port uh, seven on uh, on the cave primary switch and and uh, and and plug a wire map in on one side and do a pin to pin and with tdr or such figure out oh yeah the break is at 100 feet or it's at zero feet or, or whatever exactly. so just, just, just exactly. this, this beautiful you know complementing between the handheld dispatch tools uh to get to the fine grain uh uh, issue and 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 then marvis for the, for the overall uh uh integrity of the system exactly exactly just wanted to show that since since you know uh had to use that myself two days ago yeah marvis followed by this guy and and what's um last question i guess i guess uh that's always like for us tools nerds we we never have enough tools and 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 you know uh, we always want new new stuff so What's can you reveal anything about like what's the next uh, next thing or where will you be more focusing on where will you be less you you mentioned a little bit about where you will be less focusing on yeah so you know obviously we have to chase the, you know the latest Wi-Fi technologies uh, okay. and uh, on that topic uh, how's six gig looking for you James uh, it, 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 it's on the bench I guess I can say uh, and so. Uh, uh, so that's forthcoming. That'll uh, affect the product line. Uh, as I, you know, I mentioned earlier, the the windfall, uh, you know, Etherscope being the the our, our our you know tip of the technology for us, and 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 but basically carving out pieces of that into 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 uh, uh, lower cost, uh, uh, more domain uh, targeted products uh and uh and then of course continuing in 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 the cloud uh we got a lot of things we can do in the cloud i mean if you think about what i showed you on survey right that's 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 survey 101 you know of course you know you, you need you need packed passive and iperf uh there's there's uh, hey as long as you're walking around get this other information for me uh there's uh uh, there, there's, there's additional uh, heat map types. You know, we're, we're in through all the fact one that's on the short list. You'll, you'll see in a bit is, uh, uh, is uh, 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 SSID overhead. Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, because I was, I was kind of fascinated by the SSID calculator uh, done by, uh, I think it was that Francois, I, I believe. Uh, and, uh, you know, and thought, hey, we can automate this. And so, just, just, you know, again, you know, not, not, I, I don't. Think you're going to see us as as the as the high end, you know, predictive planning, uh, uh, you know, major major uh, Wi-Fi player, uh, but uh, but kind of in the troubleshooting space. And and the real problems that AP is changing channels. How much overhead are, are these SSIDs chewing up? Uh, uh, you know, the, 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 those day in and day out. I got an intermittent. I don't want to sit here all day. 
you know, I, 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 you know, I don't want to travel to the site, especially now. Uh, you know, th those are the pragmatic problems that we are going to continue to solve. And, and certainly, you know, we were in a great position with the remote stuff, right? When, when COVID came along, uh, yeah. and, and it just makes us, you know, realize that, that, you know, we, we always had a saying the expert was never where the problem was. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, our, 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 our brand of, of collaboration, uh, you know, between the handheld in the field and, and, and the cloud as the, as the repository for all information, right? Whether it's, you know, if you look at my, my auto test screen here, I've got, I've got, you know, and I've actually, I'm on a, I'm, I'm running like six different test stacks here, but, you know, I've got 1700 test results in here, right? And, and, uh, and I can just come in immediately and say, well, hold it, which tests, did I do with this particular etherscope? And now I'm down to uh, now I'm down to 633. Oh, which of those had problems? Uh, now I'm down to just these. Oh, which of these had problems in 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 May? You know, and 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 you can just see how you can just kind of stack up this slice and dice filtering. Okay, let me generate a report on that. Let me send that. Let me send that to somebody. But the the, the management of all your auto test results from a link sprinter. All the way through. Uh, oh, hang on. Of course, I wasn't showing my screen during that. Sorry. Uh, so uh, basically, I was showing. Here's all my test results. Click on anything blue. Uh, in fact, this will be interesting. Which which of my test results were done on on LRC? Uh, only 25 were done were done on our protection network. Which ones failed? Uh, none. Which ones had errors and warnings? Here's the ones with the warnings, uh, and and just this ability, which happened during you know time, date, slicing, filtering, uh, on and on. So all test results, everything from a link sprinter through the link runners, through the air check, through the through the etherscope, all that here uh, manageable. What happened last time we tested on that switch port? Literally being able to. Uh, to go in and and in fact, if I found my wireline results here, uh, let me pull the SSID out. Uh, and so here's a wireline result. Uh, let me get that out of the way. Uh, what other tests have I run on this particular switch? You know, you can see everything's everything's linkable. You know, everything creates these these this nice filtering system. So test results from everything, every tester in your enterprise, unit management over the air software updates, remoting in. Uh, understanding where you are and support email notifications. Uh, I can basically say, "Hey, only send me an email notification when there's an error on an auto test." And so your technicians can be running around doing whatever, and then all of a sudden, boom, you're going to get an email only on only on a, on a failure. Uh, so unit kind of the the uh, the unit management side of things. What's running? What versions? Uh, 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 any files off of anything? Of course, I got. All, in fact, here's the screenshots I did from the roaming earlier. But, uh, but somewhere down in here, I should have some uh, captures. Uh, in fact, here's a great workflow. Guy goes out instantly. Here, let's see here. Let's make it real. Come out. Uh, I'll go ahead and do a capture. Uh, in fact, I will do this even a little bit easier. Let's see. Uh, let me let me come over here. Let's go to Wi-Fi. Let's pick my SSID. Let me pick my LRC SSID. Let me let me go to uh, this particular BSSID. Let's just pick one here. Uh, okay, there's what's going on with that. Let me do a capture on that. We automatically set up the, the channel, the filter, the BSSID. I'm going to go ahead and start that capture. Okay, we're running along. I'm grabbing some frames, a nice graph to give you a sense. Hey, I'm getting the right thing because a lot of times you do the capture, then you're like, okay, now do this, you know, and then and then you just want to know you got that right. Certainly, we can't do full decodes on the product. Stop. Uh, but you wouldn't want to do that either, would you? Like full decodes, uh, yeah. there's different places uh, for that. You guys have, have yeah. like the whole deep product. Yeah, we think that. about Wireshark taking, you know, 10 seconds just to load on your laptop, right? And 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 so, uh, so in fact, right here, 1109, here, here's that exact capture I just did. Come in, click. Now, remember, I might be in a different site. And boom, I'm immediately into my capture of that AP. 
So you just see these these incredible, you know, kind of collaborative workflows we've tried to try to build into the product that that uh, so, that support this. So I see you using Wireshark and not Air Magnet uh, Analyzer. Yeah, I sh I, you're right. I probably should be using Air Air, Air Magnet Analyzer. Uh, and I think it does have some additional decoding capability. You know, one thing I'll say about the Wi-Fi captures is, is we do have the radio tap header in there. And I think if I were to look at any of these, I could go in, right, and get the additional radio tap information out. So even if you're even if you're a Wireshark guy, uh, you know, that's there. I'll say one other thing about the, the, the cloud, right? And you see, you've certainly seen this. I mean, the Wi-Fi community, uh, uh, a lot of them gravitate towards the MacBook, you know, and, and it's hard to decide. Am I, doing, yeah. am I doing a PC yeah. thing? You know, am I, or am I doing it on a PC? Am I doing it on, am I doing it for the MacBook? There might be a couple of Linux uh, folks out there. You know, the, the beautiful thing about the cloud is, is all of this then is happening, you know, in a platform agnostic manner. Uh, and yep. you can you, run you care, right? anywhere. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, James, yeah, while you're here, uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, but I was just kind of thinking while we're while we're here, I think everybody would want to know that we just dropped a code release last Friday, version 1.2.2 for Etherscope, um, and also a corresponding changes in Link Live, where we're showing um, adjacent channel and co-channel interference in our surveys now. So maybe take a look at that. Yeah. Uh, so people can see what we're doing in the heat mapping side of things. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'm not as canned here as I would like to be, but, but let's just go at it, right? So let's, let's look at co-channel interference, and I'm going to keep my same thing on, on LRC, uh, in the 2.4 gig band, uh, and wow, like I said, I'm in my Wi-Fi cesspool, right? So, so I've got, I've got. 10, 10 or greater there, so I, this filter isn't even going to make sense, but I can click on any of these points then, and I didn't really show this before, let me get this out of the way, and let me get this out of the way, yeah. and and so uh, uh, so I, you can click on any of these points, in fact, in fact one of the additions is, is you know the ability to, to show the direction, uh, if you really want to understand how you did the walk, uh, but all, and this is not the most interesting heat map because because there is well let's try adjacent channel interference uh maybe that'll give us some color gradation uh and equally equally bad all right i'll go back to co-channel uh the uh uh but you can click on any of these points and then come over here to this uh to this table and uh and and that's everything we saw. And I can immediately say, hey, I was at that point, uh, 2.4 gig. You know what? Oh, you know what I should have done? I, I know how to get gradation. Sorry. I need to I need to add a channel to the filter. So in the 2.4 gig band on channel uh, one, let's apply. Uh, and hopefully this will give us something a little more interesting. Yeah. Okay. Finally. Uh, so I can come over here and and uh, click uh, and uh, and immediately see the that on channel one for my LRC uh, SSID that I've got Kate eight co-channel interferes. Well, well, who the heck are they? Well, they're, they're, they're these other guys, these other SSIDs, and all these are nicely filterable, right? So you can just come in here and slice through through your, your, your heart's content. Uh, and, but maybe more interesting might be, yeah, on channel one, who, who are my adjacent guys? Well, hold it, I got a guy here on, on uh, two and uh, four that, that's also uh, interfering with this. And I think this guy must be interfering. Yeah, this guy's interfering because he's wide, right? These are 20 megahertz. Here's a guy on six, but he's 40 meg. So, so he's in the mix too, right? So, uh, so you can start to see that. And, and so, like one of the things we just pushed, and and what you're going to kind of see from us is a is a one to two month cadence on on releases, right? As we, as, especially in in the survey space. But you know, we just added the security filter type. So now I can come in here. And across all of my, uh, across all of my, uh, uh, if you want to just come into a site and say, hey, what's open? Uh, I could come in here and say open and apply. Uh, and, uh, uh, and on channel one with open security, I've got this guy right here. Uh, then there he is open, right? So, uh, so you can just see this nice ability to kind of uh, slice and dust. If I took the channel out, of course, I got a lot of open stuff, I suspect. Uh, 
and uh, and so yeah, so you just you know just like I said, so so we added uh, Cohen adjacent channel interference. Uh, we added uh, uh, you can see the overlapping APs uh, for for coverage uh, is is on the threshold I think for next month or that that's coming out next month. I'm on a test stack here. Uh, the uh, we added that security filter. We added uh, the ability on AirMapper to uh, to basically take the uh, to, to carve out the settings because you've kind of got the global box settings, but sometimes you come into a specific site and you need to uh, and you need to uh, 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 say, hey, you know what? I, I need a quick survey just on one six and, and eleven. Uh, for this site, right? And so you can come in and say, "Hey, I want to to only do, uh, you know, I only want to do uh, uh, these channels in my survey. Uh, I'll just pick one here to make it simple. And then, uh, and I don't want any five gig or hang out on the channels. And then take that whole thing and name it uh, as a project. This is this is the Bank of America building or, or, or whatever. Uh, and so, uh, uh, so we've added that. So you can just see how we're uh, how we're continuing to 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 advance the cause here, right? And and you know I'm not giving anything away by saying, well, okay, where's Active Survey? Where's IPER Survey? You know, uh, that you know that 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 that's on deck. So uh, so stay tuned. Right, and this lots to come. If we talk about like uh, different survey methods, so so uh, the Etherscope has two Wi-Fi adapters, right? Yes. Uh, does it? And uh, the G2 has one, yes. right? So, so, so there, there's uh, some additional stuff that you get if you're doing a survey, especially long term. You could, you could assume uh, if you know with the Etherscope compared to G2. Uh, but I, I guess, like I think you guys started off uh, absolutely right, like passive survey first, and then you know the rest is later. I, I would think that 95% uh, of of on-site survey work is is uh, you know passive, primarily passive, and then maybe uh, optionally uh, active, and then you know the rest is something like you know many do ping surveys in addition to uh, or, or like some kind of basic active surveys in addition to passive. I think yeah. that's where the industry would you agree with yeah that? i yeah I, I i agree and in fact i think there's a lot more heat maps to be tapped out like you know like i mentioned that example of, of uh, ssid overhead right and so you look at something like that and that's a real problem right and and uh, uh especially when you get into you know retail multi-store settings and you know you can lose you, know, you you get some guys out there at their you know you get a printer that out of the box they didn't even know it is beaconing at the at the one meg basic rate you know chewing up one percent of your of your wi-fi bandwidth you you aggregate that stuff and it's easy to lose 20 30 40 50 percent understanding uh you know what what those things are so you know so even on passive i think there's a lot of ways for us to lean into the the troubleshooting side of this not so much the proof that the ap's were put in the right place but that in the current environment with the current clients uh that that it that 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 these are the things that can cause you problems and then just this drop dead simple ability to to do to do filtering and uh uh and you can see here i can just filter filter on anything and and by the way you know if, if you look if you were to look at this this is progressive right so as i picked open here it brought me down to just my ssids that were open right so you don't have to wade through you can just continue to whittle away on what you want to visualize here incrementally and then at any point okay i want to do i want to do guest and that okay fine uh and uh and go ahead and apply there and then uh and then uh basically take 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 those off uh and so oh uh, where where where's that guy uh and so uh in fact i can probably see these probably right over here uh in this corner of the room so uh yeah so just just this very simple ability to to slice and dice and uh and, and by the way it, it isn't any different on the on the product right uh you know if i were over here and i was in and i was in wi-fi and I was trying to look at all of my uh, BSSIDs. Uh, 
I can come in here and say, hey, you know what? This is this is overwhelming for me to to deal with 200 BSS IDs. Let me get it down to the things that are that are that are uh, near me, and let me get it down to things that are supporting uh, uh, AC, uh, and let me get it down to you know. And you can see I've I've now whittled down to 34 of of 24. And so this this ability to slice and dice. Uh, you know, which is which is right, getting to the needle in the haystack, right? There's there's no problem with us, especially on Wi-Fi, generating overwhelming amounts of information. The the problem for us is managing that information. Uh, and again, these progressive filters, right? Since I already chose these two things, I don't need to go through my 85 SSIDs. I can then come right in on on this particular SSID, and there's my filter chips. If I want to peel something off, I just I just hit the X, and so now now I've peeled down to to you know 12 of 215, and then and then and then once you've filtered, then what do I want to sort on? Well, I want to. I want to see which one has the most clients. Again, nobody in the office, right? So this is a little bit anemic, but but uh, I think there's me and some painters. Uh, and so, uh, uh, but you know, two, two clients on, on this guy right here. Uh, and uh, and so yeah, you can you can just kind of see the, the 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 this workflow here of filtering and sorting just to get you to the problem. Uh, so yeah, that that's and and that's and that's that's pervasive in both. The cloud and and on uh, and on the and on the handheld. Hey guys, we're getting to the uh, bottom of 90 minutes here on the call, and it's been an engaging discussion so far. But I hope that we can answer at least a couple of questions uh, that have come in along the way. Uh, one, James, that have, has come in about uh, this capability with Air Mapper is how would we utilize that to conduct an AP on a stick kind of survey? Yeah, so you would do you basically park your AP and then and then wherever you wanted it, uh, plant your stick, so to speak, and then uh, and then walk around, uh, gather the information, and then uh, and then you'd be able to you know go back and look and look at the attenuations and uh, and understand the coverage of that of that specific AP relative to the the structure of the of the of the site you're in. Can you differentiate? Uh, can you tell the tool to differentiate between the two, uh, between the same AP being in two different uh, physical locations? Can you somehow separate those as two different entities today, or maybe something to think about for the future? Yeah, yeah, that, I think that's something to think about. Right now, you probably just would start another survey, uh, and then, and then, you know what? As as you would, you know, push up to link live, and you know. I think one thing that's on our shortlist here is the ability to add annotations also uh, right right in here. Yeah, we're very much about about annotating things. In fact, if I was over here looking at my wired test result, uh, actually let me come over here. Uh, Office wired, right? This ability to kind of add comments, add pictures, uh, uh, and and things like that. So I can come in here, add a comment, type it in. La, 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 uh, done. Uh, boom. That goes up in the cloud. That's now something I can easily find and filter. So that 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 same uh, spirit of of annotation, because uh, because since we have the camera in the unit, you can you could annotate and 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 you know so you could imagine seeing a little snapshot icon here and being able to click on that, or or that we would uh, annotate between. Them. I guess the other thing you could do is. Uh, if you could easily change the uh, change the SSID on the AP as you move locations, you could do that, and then you'd be able to filter on SSID. But yeah, that, that's a great question. And then a question about um, you know, you see, asked the question about the fact that we have the two radios on the product. Are they both used for the survey per process? How are the, how are the multiple radios utilized in doing surveys? Yes, yeah, so we have we have both a test radio uh, and and kind of a connectivity radio, and the and the connectivity radio is actually connected more to the Android side, uh, and and what that allows us to do is is basically be scanning all the Wi-Fi uh, air, as you can see here. I'm let me go to full screen here. Uh, so I'm scanning all the air, and at the same time, uh, I am uh, I'm uh, 
uh, I'm connected. And so this is a Wi-Fi client. In fact, we, we, we haven't talked about this all, but this, this fits into the simplicity theme of this webinar, right? I mean, it's hard to troubleshoot uh, Wi-Fi clients based on a manufacturer Mac prefix, right? This is a Dell laptop. That's an Intel Mac, right? But there's all these, you know, the wonky, the Han High is my favorite, right? Which is really Foxconn that exists in almost every Wi-Fi printer. It doesn't tell you it's a brother printer. So here I'm looking at my laptop and I can look at it from both the the, and because we have the connected radio, it can sort of scan and come in from the IP address and, hey, what ports are open and, 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 and more importantly, what's your best name? So if I were to look at my laptop, you would see that, that here's the NetBIOS name that we got out of it because there's an IP address. When you have an IP address for a Wi-Fi client, there's a ton of things you can do. You can coax it out, right? I could come over here and say, hey, Run, run. This is something that's that's not waking up very often. I want you to look look at this arsenal of tools, right? When think about a Wi-Fi client and how limited you are only knowing it in the air, because 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 everything else is encrypted, uh, and 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 using this second radio to then actively scan the network and get names. Uh, Apple, I like I'll see you know Fred's iPad and and as opposed to some you know Apple manufacturer prefix. And so and then once you have that your ability to do any sort of testing on it. And if it's a client that isn't speaking often like an IoT thing, I can actually run a, a hundred millisecond ping to it and and coax it out. And so uh, so uh, uh, you know and I think what you're really seeing and, and, and you saw this from UC too, right? On the MIST side, they have they have knowledge about about the names of the devices and all this because because they can see it on the unencrypted side on the AP. For us, a major challenge and and, and a major issue for customers was trying to troubleshoot Wi-Fi in a handheld with only MAC addresses. So we broke through this layer two ceiling. Uh, uh, and 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 it's just super easy to pivot back and forth. Here I am on the discovery side where I can apply all these tools to the to it as a uh, as a uh, uh, as an IP client connected client, but I can just as easily click on this Mac here, this underlined link, and pivot to the RF view of it and. Uh, and and understand how it's connected to the network signal to noise. In fact, I can go in and start monitoring my my stats. In fact, uh, I'm going to get gutsy here. Let me take this and let's go over here. I'm actually monitoring my own. My this is me me webcasting off right here, right? So let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and and fire off a speed test uh, on my laptop and. And I hadn't rehearsed this, so let's see here. And so we should see, there we go. Now you can actually see that relative to the, the utilization on the channel, uh, I'm, I'm, my client here is actually you know, consuming, consuming the, the bulk of it. It's, it's, it's the blue here, right? In fact, now here comes, the, here comes the uplink. We're in one of those screwy uplink is faster than downlink scenarios. But, you know, and, and, and along the way, RX and TX rate, Nobody's here, right? So the retries were low, nice and healthy. No, no, nobody interfering with me today. Uh, but, uh, but yeah. So, you, so you can just see how. But, but all this happens because I, I, I have a good name for this thing. And so, uh, just, just a great example of, of, uh, of. And so that's how we use the second radio. One of the ways. The other is that, is that you can be scanned and connected and roaming, right? Having a management port, uh, as I showed the cloud remote stuff. You know, the reality is I can do that. Right into the, I can do that right into the into the into the Wi-Fi connection. So now, as your technician's wandering around, you're actually still running remote because we have a Wi-Fi connected radio and a, and then and then the Wi-Fi test radio doing all the scanning. So, uh, so that that's kind of how we how we how we attack that. Excellent. Hey, so we're getting near the bottom of the hour. You see, we've got one question for you, and then maybe we should wrap up. Somebody wants to know what's your uh, what's your high score on Scared Stiff. <laughs> so so uh, for for the 99 percent of the audience who don't know what that question was about uh <laughs> first of all very much appreciate the inside question secondly i have played scared scared stiff a lot less and the iron maiden a lot more so uh, whoever it was please email me at uc at juniper.net and we can definitely exchange uh the scores that's uc at juniper.net Dot net or just Google 
Jussi, Wi-Fi, and you will find me. But yeah, so so definitely, uh, I mean, slightly off topic, but uh, you, you know, having something to balance uh, balance out this or all, all this geekery that we do on the keyboards and stuff. I found computer games like normal computer or, or PlayStation games didn't cut it anymore. I needed something more like tangible and physical, and you know, something to get me off the chair and start, you know, uh, just smashing on a device, and and that's <laughs> thus the pinball machines. That's the idea. But very much appreciate the question. Thank you. Any so any last minute closing thoughts? No, I appreciate anybody I think... that stuck with us for ninety minutes, uh, and uh, uh, and like I said, more, more to come. Exactly, and I, I really um, first of all thank you so much for having me on, uh, Dan and James. This was a real pleasure. And secondly, I, I really like the uh, like. Although these are these are like different worlds, the tools world and uh, and the Wi-Fi infrastructure world, there's still a lot of overlap, which I personally enjoy very much. And um, and it's like I I like the this simplicity that you guys do, and I think Miss shares the same kind of kind of vision because we only have the APs and the cloud, right? We don't have controllers, we don't have controllers of controllers, location servers, none of that stuff. Everything happens on the cloud. Whereas you guys, you know, all you need is this one baby and i'm always uh you know back in the past i was very uh very jealous of the of the one button uh simplicity of that um, so there is similarities in the simplicity aspect for sure yeah yeah so, you know like i said in the beginning I, I think of you as the as the surveillance cameras and think of us as the gopro uh, yeah, exactly exactly very good guys thank you very much and thank you very much to the audience for uh, joining us today and hanging on for a while we appreciate your attention. This webinar has been recorded, so if there's someone who wants to go uh -oh. back and view it afterwards, oh yes, oh yes, there's evidence. Uh, or to pass this off to a colleague, we'll have that, and uh, we'll also follow up with uh, some more detailed questions about, uh, or answers to some of the questions that came across, maybe put out an FAQ for you all. All right, thank all right. you. You bet. Thank you so much. Have everybody. a great evening. We'll talk to you all later. Thanks. Have a great evening, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.